So in this video, we're going to talk about BJTs uh, with a finite base width. Uh, because in the last video, we said, well, if we've got this BJT, so let's say it's just a PNP structure, because why not? Um, if we've got this BJT, we know it's going to have some depletion regions when, it, when we initially put these junctions together. And we said, uh, let's apply a, a forward bias to this junction so that it's acting like a diode and a reverse bias to this junction so that it's acting like a bucket or a collector uh, so that we can collect all of the holes that we inject over from this P side. So we're injecting a bunch of holes uh, from this P side to this N side. And we wanted to figure out what the current is in this device. And for that, we need the carrier cons the carrier distribution, P of X. And we know what the carrier distribution is right here, so right outside the depletion region, uh, because we just applied the law of the junction uh, to find it. So if we know this voltage, which we called, uh, what do we call this, VEB, because it's the voltage between the emitter and the base, um, if we know this voltage, then we can use the law of the junction to find uh, this concentration, uh, the whole concentration right outside the depletion region. And on this side, we could also find the whole concentration, uh, and let's call this Pn at xb, because let's say this has some finite width now, xb. And initially we said, well, uh, I think we can just draw a straight line between the two if we assume that xb is small, in other words, xb is much less than the diffusion length for holes um, in this region. But in general, that's not going to be true, right? So xb might have some finite value. We might not be able to make it as small as we want. So the whole concentration isn't going to just look like this straight line. It's going to look like something a little more complicated. And so what's it going to look like? Because if we can answer that question, then we can figure out what the whole current is at all points. And this allows us to figure out how many holes get across. And once we know this, uh, we know most of what we need to calculate the uh, coefficient alpha, which tells us how good of a BJT this device is. So if we don't assume the base is small, then what do we need to do? Well. Uh, the answer is we need to solve the continuity equation. And so you can see why, uh, why we want to assume that the base is small, because solving differential equations in general is hard, and we'd like to avoid it whenever possible. But here it's not too bad. So we just want to solve for holes. Uh, so we want the continuity equation in terms of delta P, uh, the minority carrier concentration in the base. Um, and we said that all the electric fields were confined to these depletion regions. So all the electric fields are confined to these depletion regions. And this means that we can ignore the drift current. Uh, we can ignore the drift current anywhere inside this N region. And that's nice because that simplifies the continuity equation. Uh, we're also going to assume that there's no sort of light incident on our semiconductor or no other sources of generation. And so the only things we need to worry about are, and we're also going to assume that this is in steady state, because at this point we're not interested in how these uh, transistors respond uh, in time. That will be discussed in uh, transient um, analysis of, of these devices. So if we make all these assumptions, then our continuity equation simplifies to something not disgusting. Um, the diffusion coefficient times the second derivative uh, minus delta P over tau P is equal to zero. And this isn't horrible. You know, this is a, a linear differential equation at least. And if we rearrange it into a more familiar looking form, we'll get this equation. So this is, this is cool, and this is kind of interesting. This quantity here is a little ugly, and we'd like to make it prettier. And we see that it has to have quantity uh, of inverse length, because there's a 1 over length squared on the bottom here, and there needs to be a 1 over length squared on the bottom here. So we're just going to replace this by 1 over LP squared. So this differential equation now looks like 
uh, 1 over LP squared times delta P. And LP is the diffusion length. So it's interpreted as uh, the length uh, or the length scale on which holes diffuse before they, uh, before they run into an electron and the two annihilate each other. So that's kind of cool. And in general, the solution to this equation looks like some coefficient a uh, times e to the plus x divided by the diffusion length plus some other coefficient b times e to the minus x over lp. So this is our delta p as a function of x. And here uh, we're going to restrict x to go from 0 to the base width. So we only care about the, the base region at this moment in time. And in order to solve for these a's and b's, uh, we need to apply the law of the junction. So if we apply the law of the junction at each boundary, so at 0 and xb, then we can find these a and b coefficients. And uh, the actual derivation for this is extremely ugly. And I go through something uh, basically identical in my video on the finite diode, uh, finite length diode video. So if you're interested in carrying out all the math and how to do it, uh, I'd, I'd point you in that direction. But what you're ultimately going to get if you solve for a and b, and we plot this, say from x equals 0 to x equals xb, and this is delta p of x, um, and this is our, say this is our, one of our boundary conditions and the other one. So this is delta p at 0, and this is delta p at xb. And we said initially we want to assume, or we wanted to assume that this is a straight line. But what you'll actually get is that this is somewhat curved. So it looks something like this. And how do we interpret this? What, why is this important exactly? And so this is actually the function a e to the x over lp plus b e to the minus x over lp. And depending on the values that you use, uh, a and b are going to be uh, slightly different. But in general, this is going to this is going to be what the what the equation looks like. So what does this tell us? Well, we know that the whole current, which is ultimately what we're interested in, how many holes are getting across the device at any given point, uh, that's just equal to minus q times dp times the derivative uh, of p with respect to x. But uh, here, since uh, we, we, we can just replace this with delta p, since p is just delta p plus a constant. So. We see at this side, uh, near x is equal to 0, the slope is fairly large. It's larger than we would have expected uh, if our base was really short. So this means we have more hole current uh, than expected at the, at the entrance, you could say, uh, to the base. And near x equals xb, so by the, whole, by the time the holes get to the end of the base, so let me just draw what, what that looks like here. So by the time the holes travel all the way to the end of the base, um, there's actually less hole current than we would expect because this slope is smaller. So there's less hole current than we'd expect uh, because the derivative is smaller. And that means that we're losing holes or we're losing current. and well, that seems uh, kind of nonsensical because we've got conservation of charge. But uh, remember that this is attached to uh, a couple of batteries. So all that means is that we're actually getting electrons uh, coming in from, the, uh, from this battery and they're recombining with the holes in the base. And so we're losing a lot of holes to recombination and that's bad. Uh, we don't want that. That reduces our alpha, our efficiency of carriers getting from the emitter to the collector. So from the emitter to the collector. And the larger XB gets, the worse this situation becomes. In fact, if, if XB were infinitely long, so we had an infinitely long base, then we know that the carrier concentration is just going to be a decaying exponential. It's just going to look like e to the minus x over lp. And in that case, while we've initially got some hole current here, we've got zero hole current uh, 
at infinity or a zero hole current far away from the edge of the base. So this is again demonstrating why we want our base to be very small or as, as small as possible. We want to avoid recombination. So we want to avoid any of our holes getting lost to electrons in the base. And that's sort of intuitive, right? Because the more, uh, the more space these holes have to interact with an electron, uh, so the more physical length they have, uh, the greater the chances that they'll accidentally recombine and the two will annihilate each other. And so we would like to know how much exactly, uh, how much of this hole current, uh, let's call this JP final, um, makes it from the beginning of the base to the end of the base. And this is given by what's called the base transport factor, uh, base transport factor alpha t. And this will be the subject of the next one or two videos. We want to get uh, an actual sense of how many holes uh, are lost in this PNP device, or equivalently, how many electrons would be lost in the base of an NPN device. And this will be one component of our final uh, efficiency alpha, which tells us how good of a transistor we have. And so uh, thanks for watching. If you liked the video, please feel free to like it down below or subscribe to my channel. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, also please post them down below and I'll see you next time.